he was born into slavery on the eastern shore of Maryland to a, an enslaved woman and to a white man, and it was presumed that his enslaver was his father. He only saw his mother a handful of times his whole life, and that's because she lived on a plantation that was 12 miles away. His slave mistress had never had a slave before and didn't know that it was illegal to teach him. Her name was Sophia Auld, and she was teaching her young son, Tommy, his ABCs, and there was Frederick standing right there, eager to learn, and that was all that he needed was that little spark of light into his mental darkness, into his mental bondage. On September 3rd, 1838, he disguised himself as a sailor and with the help of my great-great-great-grandmother, Anna Marie Douglas, whom he had met while enslaved in Baltimore. She was the first person in her family to be born free. And as they started to think about a life together, she was one of the first people to plant the seed of thought in his mind that, Frederick, you're not meant to be a slave for life. And so at the age of 20, he runs away. He lands in New York City. He writes a letter back to Anna. She comes to join him and they get married on September 15th. natural gift for communication. He was eloquent. He was charismatic. He was theatrical. And he was even funny. He was giving a firsthand account about the brutality that he had suffered, endured, and survived while enslaved. He was giving this firsthand account to the American public. And so the abolitionists understood that they had a star on their hands. And so they asked Frederick to join the Anti-Slavery Society as a paid lecturer. him a celebrity. That's the last thing that you want is the notoriety of a best-selling book if you're trying to hide from your, your enslaver. And so it was suggested that he flee to Europe for a couple of years as a cooling off period. And while he was in Europe, he, he talked about the abolition of slavery in the United States and he started gathering supporters. <laughs> The abolitionist uh, paper, The North Star, was important because he could get his messaging out there and he could write, you know, he would write thousands of articles over his career. And really to be a black owner of a newspaper at that time was a big deal. <laughs> In 1852, the Ladies' Anti-Slavery Society invited Frederick Douglass to give a speech about Independence Day, and they invited him to do that on July 4th. Well, in protest, he gave the speech on July 5th. Frederick Douglass gave a scathing speech. He said, what to the slave is your 4th of July? 
And what he's saying is, how can you, how dare you ask me to come and talk about your high independence, to talk about your liberty? He said, this nation is guilty of crimes that would disgrace a nation of savages. Frederick and um, President Lincoln had kind of a, a relationship that was um, back and forth. And there were times where he was very frustrated with President Lincoln and how slow he was to move toward abolition. But Frederick knew that the Civil War was about bringing down the institution of slavery. And so Frederick's importance during this time was he, he pushed Lincoln, he agitated. Frederick Douglass was the first African-American nominated for vice president of the United States. He was the first African-American U.S. Marshal, um, first African-American ambassador and council general to Haiti, first African-American recorder of deeds in the District of Columbia, and the list goes on and on and on. He said, I never want to look like a happy, amiable fugitive slave. And when you look at a picture of me, you're never going to deny that I'm a man worthy of freedom, worthy of citizenship. You know, I think that both parties in the United States political parties want to claim him sometimes for better or for worse. Um, if, in my opinion, you know, those that are on the right will look to the fact that he was a Republican, which he was, he had a quote, he said, you know, I'm a dyed in the wool Republican and I'll be a Republican for my whole life. But those of us that know our history here in the United States of the political parties know that the two parties the Democrat and the uh, Republican Party flip. And so it depends on who you're asking on what they get wrong about Frederick Douglass. <laughs> <laughs> 